Bless you. Are you are you well? Yes. Are you happy? Yes. Okay. Uh, that means you have the joy of the Lord. Yes. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Would you say the joy of the Lord yes. is my strength? Yes. Uh, what is the strength for? It's to do the right thing. That's the strength. I've been uh, we've been teaching the the Western mindset and the Greek mindset, the Greek Roman mindset, and um, what is base, the basic difference between both mindset? Is that the Greek Western mindset is a weak mind. That's very important to know, because when we have a weak mind, we ha we lack discipline. When we're weak, okay, now. The, the difference is doing and knowing. Because when you know something, you are set free. And so uh, the, the, Western, uh, the, the Western Greek mindset basically is a Hellenistic mindset because that's where it comes from. It's, it's more of a pagan mindset. And what we're going to learn today, we, we're going to learn something about, about alphabet. We're going to learn something about letters and Hebrew and questions like where did, you know, what's the real true meaning of alphabet? What is the meaning, for example, of uh, the English A versus the Hebrew A? We're going to try to learn all of that today. But again, you know, setting the foundation of what we have already learned, uh, one is that the Hebrew, the distinction uh, uh, between, I would say, the Western Hellenistic mind and the Hebrew mind is again found in the area of knowing versus doing. If you know something, then do it, okay? Because you are, you are free to do it. Say, I'm free to do it. That means you are free not to please man, but to please God. That's the big difference between the Western mind and the Hebraic mind. The, the Western mind will always try to please man rather than to please God. All right? Are you following this far? So the, he, the Hebrew is concerned with practice. Because practice makes perfect. Say practice makes perfect. So they're concerned with practice. The Greek is, is not so concerned about practicing what they know. The Hebrew is concerned, again, about practice. Um, right conduct is the ultimate concern then. The right, making the right choices. The right decisions is, is the ultimate concern. So that should be what we should have in mind. What should be our ultimate concern? Okay, yeah, again. Right conduct is the ultimate concern of the Hebrew. Right thinking. Okay, so... Now, then that means we have a responsibility then, right? So we have now, if we have to go against what we know we should do, we're lacking what? Discipline, right? Because we, if we know we're supposed to do something and we don't do it, we're lacking discipline. We're like, we're like those Paul says, by this time you should be teachers, you should be at that level to be able to teach others to do the right thing, but, but you have need for the soft stuff, the easy stuff. So that therefore duty and, and strictness or discipline of conscience are the paramount things in the life of, of the Hebrew. So do they pray rarely? three times a day. That means there's discipline, okay? That's the Hebraic mind. 
It is about discipline, strictness of conscience. For the Greek, it is usually the spontaneous. I see, I see, um, I see a, a movie, a Christian movie of Africa, and spontaneously, I, I God's called me to Africa. Instead of saying, oh, thank you very much, I need to pray first, I'll get back to you. You see, that's, the, the, the Greek would say, I need to get back to you. They don't give a spontaneous answer. Are you listening here? The Western mind is spontaneous. Instant gratification. I need this right. This is what I've been praying for all along. Yes, 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 yes. You know, isn't that true? Not so with the Hebrew mind. The Hebrew mind waits. They that wait upon the Lord. Seeking first godly heart and the godly counsel of the Lord. Why? Because the, the Western mind then therefore is a scattered mind. Right? Because it's scattered out there. And scattered people gather to what? Scattered people. Because scatteredness begats scatteredness. Just like love will begat love. Discipline will also begat discipline. If you have discipline in your life, those under you will begin to fall into discipline. An undisciplined parent, what kind of children they're going to have? Very undisciplined children. They probably wind up with the wrong undisciplined kids in the streets that are what? Scattered. Probably mm, sniffing marijuana once in a while. Uh -huh. uh, are you following so far? We're, we're learning here again, this is a recap of the, of, of the mindset, the Hebraic mindset versus the, the Greek Roman Western mindset. Duty and strictness of conscience are the paramount things in life for the Hebrew. Again, for the, the Greek Hellenistic mind that many believers do not even know that they might have, it is spontaneous, luminous. Luminous meaning what? Light, something that's shiny, something that's out here, something that's glary. This is why a lot of churches have infomercials. They have things that are glaring and lights shooting and all this stuff. You know, it's luminous. It's, it's, it's activity, spon spontaneous, you know, action, moving, you know. But that's not, that's not the Hebraic mind. There is a time and a season for everything in heaven. But in general, that is not what it is all about. This is why God spaces out the feasts and the holidays of the Lord. He spaces them out so that in between they don't have time for this luminous kind of life. Are you listening here? They're brought right back to what? Because you have to prepare for the next one that's coming. And in between the Yom Kippur's and the prayer and the fasting, there's no time for spontaneous, oh yeah, 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 this Tahiti sounds beautiful, let's go. I, I, I can say that because I, I can literally fly anywhere on, around the world at no cost. But do I go? No, because I would be sinning against God. Not literally going to hell, sinning, but if I know in my heart that, that where I'm anchored, that's where I'm supposed to be, obedient to God, and I'm flying all over the world, then that would be like a sin to, to the Lord. All right. So... The Hebrew thus extols the moral virtues as the very substance and the meaning of life. Moral virtues is the actual substance and the meaning of life. Without morals, America is so whatever you whatever you want to do is okay. All right? Well, we need to have morals, okay. The Greek subordinates them to the intellectual virtues using this instead of using their heart and the spirit right the philosophers the uh, uh, what is socrates and the other one there's three of them that formed and shaped the, the mindset for 
the Greek Western Roman mind. Someone remember the other two besides Socrates? Uh, Plato and one more? Socrates, yeah. Those are the ones that shaped and formed the mindset for Western thinking that comes from pagan, paganism, Hellenistic mentality that actually caused the forming of the shaping of the English wording alphabets. Okay, well we're gonna get into that later on, but what we don't realize is that roots matter. There's only one, there's only one, I think, one true pure language, and that's the language of God. Uh huh. And we gotta to return to that language. And it was, it was prophetically put in God's word that before Yeshua the Messiah comes, that that language would be restored to God's people. And now the Hebrew language is the language of God. As given to Moshe, preserved, I believe, also in, in the Tower of Babel, one language preserved because the lineage had to, had to be kept alive. All the other languages then for, therefore were language of Confuciusness, confusion. They, they were permitted to speak in these languages, but eventually you're not going to have these languages in eternity, where we have to learn hundreds and hundreds of languages to communicate with the Chinese or whatever it is. We're going to revert right back to the one language of God. Someone say, man, I th that's what I believe anyway. Okay? So roots really matter. And if we want to discount and say all of that stuff is ancient, I would, I would bid you to consider that if songs have been written by demons, even if the lyrics are now changed to Christian lyrics, it still has a root from demonic forces. And I don't think we should be singing it and, and twisting, as we were learning last night, doing a twist to make something bad become something like good. Because God has the ability to birth his songs into our heart and we don't have to wait for the demons to give us songs. How many understand at least that part? Yeah. And even though the melodies sound right, let us be reminded that Lucifer was the great musician of all musicians. All right? And if this world has the, the, the great singers and musicians of this world, well, they're also being influenced by Hasatan. But we want to win them for the Lord, amen? Okay, so I think that this helps to explain why so many Christian uh, and believers are focused on the issues uh, of orthodoxy and, and, and doctrine and so forth and so on. But uh, today I want to now focus on the primary uh, lesson that we're going to learn today, alphabets. So we know this much is that the languages of the world some have somehow been able to kind of um, jump from language to language. Yeah, we have pidgin language, you jump from English to pidgin language, right? And then you have all the various dialects, and you have a mixture of a Sephardic uh, and uh, original Hebrew and Ashkenazi. You, you know, the language just kind of jumped back and forth, and they kind of intermingled and so forth. Across all sorts of language barriers down through history, this has been true. Now, our Roman, the, the Roman alphabet in English is the product of actually a, a number of such leaps that I just tried to paint the picture of. Initially, we had what we, we would call the Phoenician, the Phoenician letters. Um, one of the very first letters. And uh, the Roman, actually, alphabet was, was copied directly from 
almost verbatim from the Phoenician letters. Amazingly, the letters of the Greek letters were, were copied, okay, in turn by a different people, and these people were called the Etruscans, Etruscans, e, uh, Etruscans, E T R U S C A N S, Etruscans, and these were, of course, from Italy, primarily around the year 700 B.C. The, Etru the Etruscans. Was, um, was a tongue or a language as different from Greek as Greek was from the Phoenicians. It was different, okay? A different language. It's not the same. Yet, the letters adapted very easily. So the language was different, but the letters seemed to be able to adapt. So the, the, the Romans were using Phoenician letters. The language was different, okay? It's a little bit like we can have English letters to understand Hebrew, right? Okay, but they're English letters, okay? So now the Phoenician language, in a sense, or letters now become what? Etruscan letters. So what is happening now to, to Rome? They're bringing in who? They're bringing Phoenicians in. Okay? Is it possible that the church could bring in something that was not originally an intent? This is an idea that we're moving into, okay? To be able to understand how things can come into our lives that were maybe not intended to be there in our lives, but now they're part of our lives and part of that life has a root. That root is there. To find out if the Phoenicians were, were, were pagans, now they become this pagan Letters become uh, Roman, and they become Greek, and then they become American English. And when we go further back, we find out that maybe the English letters were originally paganistic letters. Are you following me? Okay. Why then should we learn Hebrew? Because Hebrew is not pagan. If you want to get the anointing, the full impact of God into our lives, we better learn some Hebrew and not ignore it as that's for the Jews. Because someday, I believe, we're going to have to spend a considerable time in the heavens to learn the Hebrew language. Because we failed to obey God and learn it down here when we had the opportunity. This is why a ministry like, like Messianic Ministries are important today. Because we have to educate the, the, the Roman Western mentality and mindset that believes that their language is the best in the world. And, and I tell you, the English language comes from that direction. Why should we be so proud? Well, we're Americans. Yeah, we're Americans. We love America, but... As we learned last night, America is, is going down. Well, Israel is going up. Okay, someone say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So I mentioned here that the Truscan letters were copied by other peoples, the Romans, the Italians, Italy, including, I said, the Romans, whose language, okay, Latin was totally unlike Etruscan language. It was unlike. Again, the letters had, had made a jump. 
just as much, I think, as, as Christians are gradually making a jump to their roots. That's a good jump, right? Yes. All right. So as Rome conquered Italy, all of Italy, and lands beyond the Roman al okay, alphabet became the writing of Roman Europe then. Because now uh, Rome uh, conquered almost all of Europe. Caesars conquered all of, all of Europe. Mighty Caesars, you know. We know that around the year A.D. 500, the, the Roman Empire finally collapsed. But the Etruscan alphabet did not collapse. Roman letters were fitted to now uh, newer tongues. Newer tongues. Tongues that uh, of nations that would be birthed. Including uh, uh, the primitive English, English around A.D. 600. Today those letters have grown up to become our own. So the Roman letters, Roman Greek kind of uh, lettering has become our, our letters, our own. Another thing, too, is that the, the sounds of letters, considering sounds of letters. Roman letters today convey the sounds of letters. And I'll talk about the sounds of letters in a moment, because there's a, a sound of letter for A in English, and a sound of letter for A for Aleph in Hebrew, and I'll try to get into that in a moment. Let me um, juggle a little bit my, my papers by numbers here. The origin of, of letters or language. Many things that are important for all of us, right? For men. Especially if we are being called into ministry. I think everyone here is being called to ministry because you are now in, in the rudimentary uh, teachings which the average church is not getting. So perhaps I'm considering the idea that you're here because you're going to have a great calling in your life. And so there are many things that are important for man who wants to be used by God, not only in this world, but I think in the world to come. In the coming world, that is, uh, I'm speaking of in the millennium as well. The thing is that many Christians and, and theologians never take the time to go beyond what is taught in Bible college. So they would actually fail the test if given to them. By the one who said, study to show yourself what? Approved of Adonai. So I want to give you some things that uh, most people, I think, who really truly love God, never even consider learning. For example, the 22... Letters of the Hebrew alphabet is like an entire chapter. Each letter is like a chapter. Not so in the English Roman alphabet. Each letter is not like a chapter in itself. So this is why I think it takes, it takes me usually from an hour to an hour and a half just to teach one single letter. And those of you that have been in my class, that, that you, you, you heard me teach on each letter, you te you're, you're hearing an entire chapter just with one single letter, single letter alone. And if I may, I will describe each letter as an island, okay? 
So now we know I'm saying chapter, but let's call it an island. An island that you never explored. There are 17,000 islands in the Philippines, I hear, you know. Many of those islands you've never been to. I've never been to them except for the main island, the big island of the Philippines, you know. But let's describe now the 22 Hebrew letters of the Hebrew alphabet as what? Nice. As an island, okay? An island you have never visited before. And so let's call these 22 Hebrew letters islands, and you will visit them. And as some of you have already known, we've already visited some of those islands. Actually, we visit all 22. Each island, think about this in this term, because we're looking at each letter as an island. Each island's geography and local lore will be examined okay, by you, because you're going to that island, to that letter. Also, its relationship, what relationship does, does Oahu have to Molokai? What relationship does this island have to the next island? What relationship does Aleph have to Be Bet? And what does Bet have to what? Aleph, Bet, Gema, Dalet, Hebab. Okay, what does each letter have to do with each other? I know one thing is that the, the chain of islands are all connected underneath. You don't see them connected above, but there is a connection between all of the Hawaiian islands underneath. So how the letter Aleph related to the letter Beit and Beit to Gimel and Gimel to Dalit and then He and then Vav, etc., etc., as we have seen from our advanced study, Torah study. Now, some islands, speaking of island, uh, uh, Hebrew letters as islands, some islands may prove to be more lush or lofty than others, right? Yeah, that's true. Just like the Hebrew letters. Some far more interesting, filled with all kind of, of dynamics and excitement and thrills and all of that, you know. But be sure of this, anyone who will yield substantial spiritual and mental nourishment visiting these islands will experience perhaps glorious vistas. Do we have vistas here? What's one of the best vistas in the world? Huh? One of the best vistas in the world here in Oahu. Pali? The Pali. The Pali Vista is where you look at, at, the, at, at, the, at the view. Yeah, 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 yeah. So one of the best in the world, even uh, according to Mark Twain, you know, was Pali. People go, wow, you know? What beautiful scenes. Have you ever heard Christians talk about the alphabet that way? No. no. Why? Because the Western mindset is not disciplined. It is spontaneously looking for action. Are you getting this? Everything is about this and about that and I got to go there and, and pick up the phone inviting everybody to go there. The Hebrew mind won't do this. They cherish so much what they have. But they meditate and pray on something before they give a spontaneous answer. When was the last time that you were asked to do something and you didn't pray about it first and you gave a spontaneous answer? That's a Western mind right there. Mm -hmm. And God would come to help you to fix the problem and you refuse. Wow, that's Western thinking. You will refuse God all the time because you, you want to please man. That's Western thinking. You please man, not God. You got to make these network connections because to you they're important in building your future. The Hebrew mind is not that way. Trust. 
to the Lord your God with all of your heart and lean not upon spontaneous decisions. All right? So usually when I'm invited to something, I always say, I'll, I'll get back to you. Let me pray about it first so that I could already know that I'm not supposed to be there so that I could approach it properly. All right? And not embarrass the person. Mm -hmm. Other times I simply have to say, it's not part of my calling, my conviction. You know, I believe God has some other amazing plans for my life. My aunt, God bless her memory, died at age 85, and uh, she had um, 40,000 members in her congregation all over Mexico, provinces. When I was a young evangelist, she approached me and she says, be sure that you don't act spontaneously because you have a great calling in your life. You're going to be invited to many things, but not all things should you accept because you'll miss the boat. So I, I don't do that. I'm invited to meet great evangelists. I refuse. I got a line opened. Hallelujah. There's angels ascending and descending, ministering. Hallelujah. Are you listening here? So if you've got the portal open, why should you go to another portal? That it, you go to another portal because there's no portal open before you. This is why the Lord says there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the way leads into nothingness, momentarily happiness and gratification. It's not the Hebraic mindset, folks. I shall teach you, and he shall teach you of his ways, saith the Lord, and I shall teach you of my ways, saith God, so that you may walk in the right path. Let's give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Lord. Okay. So I, I spoke of these islands as being um, a vista, right? A vista uh, along this glorious vista. Mm hmm And I tell you something, that the, this, this glorious journey of, of, of view, the vista that you can see through the Hebrew alphabet goes back 4,000 years. So it, it has a deep and a glorious vista. It, it, it goes back in, in literature and in history. And it all comes alive to us. So wouldn't you think that the person then, therefore, that studies to show themselves approved of Yahweh, approved of Adonai, will be the person that will actually be chosen to, to rule because not all Christians will rule. Obedience is better than sacrifice. But it is those that have shown themselves approved of God. I learned something. I took the right counsel. I tell you, our journey is not about basic training. Because if you go to basic training and you think you graduated, you never really entered into the military. <laughs> you never really put, uh, you know, a rifle in your hand and faced the enemy face to face because all you want to do is go through basic training and then go home. I remember when I was in the service and I went into basic training, there's one guy that didn't even make it through basic training. Are you making it through basic training? Basic training is to strip yourself from what you thought you were. You thought you were a man, didn't you? <laughs> and so they strip us from what we think we are so that they could turn a boy into a, a man. God wants to turn a girl into a woman. A woman of God. A boy into a man. And I say, are you a man or a mouse? <laughs> let's become the man. And, and let's stop accepting the milk and the honey because it's sweet. 
It's time to grow up. Turn around and tell someone, I want to grow up some more. Yeah, that's an easy way to put it. I want to grow up some more. <laughs> All right. So if you were to ask the average person, for example, where do our Hebrew letters come from? What would the average Christian tell you? The average Christian, come on. They wouldn't know what you're talking about. What about if you were to ask them, how did they get their shape? How did they, these Hebrew letters, get their assigned sounds? Aleph, Bet, Aleph, Bet, Gimut, Aleph, Hey, Vav. How did we get this, these sounds of letters of the Hebrew alphabet? You ask the average person, they have not studied to show themselves approved of God because we've kept them on, um, what do you call baby food? I'm thinking of another word. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Say that louder. Yeah, kept them on that. You keep kids on that, you know, they'll never know how to use their teeth properly. For solid food is for those that have learned to exercise their spiritual senses. And when God speaks to us, He wants to, us to exercise our spiritual senses to chew on this. Hmm? But if you're just in that kind of baby food, you never know how to chew properly. This is where the sheep and the cow comes in. They have four compartments and and when the cow chooses the cud, as it were, what happens to the cud? He chooses, he chews on it and the juices begin to fall, go right into his stomach and then he he, 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 he swallows it and, and then all of it begins to work and then he regurgitates it, he brings it out and he chews it some more and he spits out the, the pieces of wood and things that that it's not good, you know, and Jews do that too, too you know, <laughs> they're spitting out, you know, true, right? And, and it basically it is uh, getting rid of this and that, you know, and then they put it in the next stomach and it goes through, through four compartments of the stomach and when it comes out, it comes out milk, ready to nourish. Okay, so this is what you call also meditation. When we meditate in God's Torah. And David meditated in his, in his word day and night. So turn to Psalms 1 right now. And let's take a quick look to see how it will affect our life. Okay, I will read and you just follow along. It says... Um, Blessed, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. The wicked is the one that does not do what God says to do. Okay? Or stand in the way of sinners, or sits in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the Torah of Adonai. And on his Torah he meditates, what? Day and night. This is why... He, you, you, if you go to Israel, you see the observant Jew. What is he doing uh, in the bus stop? He's, he's, he's got a Seder out there. He's meditating. He's praying day and night. They take it literal, you know. What are we doing in America day and night? We have a, a Western mindset. We don't have a biblical mindset. We separate God from everything. And God is supposed to be in all and through all. All right? So we says, well, that is being fan uh, a little bit, you know, fanatic. Call it what you might call it. These people are preparing themselves to rule with Yeshua the Messiah. All right? They consider this world not their home. They're just a passing by. The Western mind says, this is our world, and we make our gods here, and we have 12 gods. This is what the Romans had. They had 12 gods and goddesses. All right? So now you have to yield to every god and goddesses. And, and every god and goddess is making some demand from them. 
It's a little bit like when you, you were a Roman, uh, those that were Roman Catholic, okay? They had how many, basically, people that would pray, be praying to? Was it, they were just praying to God? They were praying to Mary, they were praying to, to Paul, they're, and they're praying to the apostles, they're praying to the saint, they're praying to that saint, and for safety, this one, and to that. Holy Mary, Mother of God, save us, and we're not in our prayer. <laughs> oh, my goodness, you know. Why? Because that comes from the Roman mentality. Twelve gods, twelve prayers. Still, the Roman Catholic Church is doing the same thing. They haven't got out of that Roman mindset and mentality that initially came from paganism and the Phoenician, which God told his people, go out there and kill them all, destroy them. This is not what I want. Men, women, and children must die. Whew. Oh, my Lord. Because they'll contaminate the future generations. But they didn't do it all the way. And we're paying the price. All right? Are you following here? Yeah. See, those of you that really, really open your heart, you, you're able to digest. Those of you that are struggling, you know, this is too much. I had one brother say, wow, this is way over me. I said, well, you're in advanced Torah study class. I'm so sorry, you know. But, uh, you know, God will teach you because you need no man to teach you. So if you're hungry and thirst, you shall be filled, you know. Okay? They that hunger and thirst. When you seek me with all of your heart, then you shall find me. And it's the whole thing is that we've got to find the truth and the truth will set us, set us free. All right, so what, what else does it say in this verse? Look what it says in verse 2. But his delight is in the Torah. And then verse 3 says, he becomes like a tree that's planted by streams of water. So if you're planted by streams of water and someone comes to give you a tank of water, what are you going to say? I got enough water. This is strange fire you're bringing. Strange water. I don't need that kind of water because I'm already where? Planted. Oh, you say planted. Say planted. That means you're literally in the water. Glory to God. And if you are in the water, you are in the water. Glory be to God. Who needs to bring you more water from a strange place? Hallelujah. Okay, so this is important for us to realize that why David was called a man after God's own heart. Do you want to be a man or woman after God's own heart? All right. No, if you are in those waters or not. Because if you are not, you will have a Western mindset and accept waters all over the place spontaneously. Okay? Because there is luminous. This is where the word illuminati comes in. And illuminati is not about God. It is hasatan behind the Illuminati and this Illuminous thing that we want to be in front of people. We've got to let that go. I, I, I know because I read his story of this um, rock and roll star. Years ago he gave his heart to the Lord and he was famous everywhere, especially in America. But he gave his heart to the Lord and he went and he sat in a congregation and everyone wanted to hear him sing. And he says, I can't sing. And I will refuse to sing for at least one year until I get the full pulse and the knowledge and the understanding in my spirit of this new life that I have. Because he was, quote, a what? Not a rising, but he was a star. And I tell you something, he wanted in essence say, I want to get out of this Western Greek Roman mindset. I want to get a hold of the heart of God. So when I finally get up there and do my singing or my music or whatever it is, it is no longer I that liveth, but he that liveth in me. Someone say amen. amen. This is the way it's supposed to be. 
No. And this is why the, the observant Jew throughout the years has been criticized and condemned. Anti-Semitism has nothing to do with the Jew himself. It's about what he believes. It's about the fact that they know that he has been chosen. And they that pursue what? Righteousness shall be persecuted. So this is what it's really all about. You, you have discipline in your life, and no matter what comes, you stay focused. You don't drink the wrong waters or accept the wrong waters in your life. It says there that in verse 3, awesome, like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. Okay? So what has the Lord said for us? We must learn to be instant in, in season and even out of season. But for sure, in season, you're going to be yielding fruit. So that when you're out of season, the time that you need to wait on the Lord, you don't have to accept things all over the place. He shall take care of you through every hour of every day. That is also in this off season when the, 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 the resources and the finances are not there, you know. You know something? It seems like, like we have been like uh, in season but out of season. But God is showing us, I want you to be an example and a model. I'm going to give you the nations of the world in an out of season time so that everyone will know that I am the God of season and also I am the God of out of season. I, are you following here? You know. So you'll never have to depend on networking with anything and anyone in this world. And so I have always resisted that. To this day, I do not do no network whatsoever. How are you getting ahead? I have had people come into the office and they shake their heads and this, we know that you have money. We just know that you can't do this without money. I tell you something, folks. He says, God says, come and buy without money money. When we learn the deeper secret of how to do this, and, and this is why I believe God is raising this ministry, that when the time comes that the world will know it, they will ask the question, where did they come from? How did this happen? And we will be an example and a model to this world. This is God's way. Hallelujah. He is still the way and the truth. And He is the life giver. And He is the God of seasons and out of seasons. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He changeth not. You know what? When they were in their huts, in their little, in, in their little clay homes in Egypt, they were comfortable. They had their, they had their little carrot, uh, you know, little plants in their homes. And, and they had their garlics and they had whatever they had there. They had a little bit of comfort. Yeah, they didn't have their TVs. I know. They didn't have their, their, their smartphones. But they were somewhat comfortable there. But God took them out of season and brought them into he, he, he brought them into an out of season. He took them into a wilderness that was hot, burning, dry. Nothing would grow there. But God says, I'm going to show you how I work in the out of season. And he calls them to be blessed. 150 train loads approximate carloads of food was coming in without even trains. Enough water to feed three million people. Their clothes were brand new from the get-go. They, they walked in this, in this hot heat feeling the air conditioner that God put over them by day and the refreshment of His Spirit by the, the, the fire by night. You see how God is saying, I want to take care of you when you're out of season. Just do it my way. Learn to do it my way. But we're not going to learn to do it his way when we have a Western Roman mindset that's got to gradually go. Hallelujah. Can it happen? Absolutely. Hallelujah. We want to be the model and that example. I want to be able to draw people into this work in ministry. Ministers, assistants, staff that have the same heart 
and the same mind. I can't work with people outside of that. I will not work with people outside of that zone because they'll bring in that mindset and that, that, that cannot be brought in. This is what's happened traditionally from the very beginning. You get a Phoenician language and you bring it over and it becomes a Roman mindset. Uh, uh, the, the, the Phoenician alphabet now becomes Roman. The Roman becomes Greek. The Greek becomes uh, English and also Russian, by the way, as well. All of these languages were influenced from there. It is not God's language. This is why I believe that every human being will eventually learn his language. Amen? Amen? Now, we, we have a taste of that already. And what is the taste? When you're filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have a universal spiritual language of God that only you and God can communicate with that Hasatan himself does not even know what you're talking about. Someone say amen, hallelujah. And I always believe that God created this Hebrew language in such a fashion that you would not even be able to use it to swear and to say evil things with that language because it is a God language, it's a holy language. And only the unholy people would take a language and perverse it, just like they did to the temple in Yerushalayim. Okay, the final part of this verse is important. What is the last part that it says there? It says that their leaves will never, what? In other words, your bank account will never go down. Why? Because you don't really have a human bank account. You see, we look into the natural, right? I have my bank account. It's called the Hallelujah Bank of Heaven. That's where I keep drawing from. It has so much resources in there that I can open in, in the 14th of this month. I can open in Kampala, Africa, another prayer center, global. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I keep, we keep opening them. I don't do the, the Holy Spirit. Why? Because I keep drawing from that Hallelujah Bank of Heaven. I do not need to network, therefore, right? Oh, come on. Let's, let's, let's say amen to that. Glory to God. It says there, look, the last part of verse 3. And whatsoever he does what? Prospers. prospers. Everything that you do prospers. Not some things, but out in season and out of season, you're still prospering. Every single prayer that you do to the Lord it's a mitzvah. Whether you get the answer now, you'll get it in the world to come. It's coming, right? Because there's a reward with every obedience that we have, that we obey God with. This is why he says obedience is better than sacrifice because he is calling upon us on a regular everyday basis to do something. This is why the, the Jewish people have hundreds of blessings. Blessings when you go to the restroom too. All kinds of blessings, yeah? Wow, thank you God for keeping my tubes open. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah, my life will be extended a little bit longer because I'm being flushed out. Now, how many, how many people in the Western world do that? No, we, because we don't understand the deep heart of God and how he, it, what He does affects us in our entire life. He is in all and through all. Nothing ever escapes Him. Amen. All right, so the world system, hallelujah, is a system that we, we, we must learn to deal with here in the right way. Now, let's go a little further. I'm giving you some things that most people who love God never even consider. I mentioned to you too that I'm looking now as the Hebrew letters as an island. Did you follow me in all of that? Yeah. All right. Next. Take the letter A in Hebrew. It's called what? Aleph? Say ah, uh, Aleph. Okay. The most basic Hebrew roots, root words are formed by linking two Hebrew letters. I'm talking about words now. So the most basic Hebrew root words are linked 
or formed by linking two Hebrew letters together, and they can be used as a nouns or verbs because one each letter has a meaning. Okay, we understand that already. The meaning of these letters will assist us in providing the Hebraic meaning of a word. So when we read a word, we already understand, we would be able to understand the Hebrew meaning of that word because we understand the Hebrew meaning of the letters. The first letter, Aleph, is a picture of an ox. Okay? So you have a picture of an ox. As the ox is uh, an animal that is strong, right? And what is an ox used for in farming? To plow. All right? An ox. And they always, usually, they always usually put two oxes together, but they never put two young oxes together. Why? Because there's no discipline in young oxen. When you do not adhere to godly counsel, it's because you have no discipline. Okay? So they put an older oxen together with a younger oxen. And the, young, the younger oxen, oxen, at the beginning of the day, wants to do what? Think spontaneously. They look over here and say, Wow! I got an invitation! Run! You know. And what does the elder oxen do? Come back here. It goes like this. <laughs> no way, Jose. Look at my back. I learned the hard way. Are you listening there? So it brings that young ox into line. Okay? So whom God loves, he what? He chases. All right? That's, that's why the A is an ox. Because it's strong, and the strong will chasten the younger ones. Hopefully the younger ones will listen and not go off like some lambs do. And they go off all we like sheep have. Some sheep have gone astray. And what does the master of the sheep do to a sheep that goes astray? Most sheep will not go astray, but some will. You'll go out and look for them and leave these two corral, and then he breaks the leg. Would you like to have your spiritual life broken and set back for a year or two? That's exactly what would happen. Think about the results of no discipline in our lives. Think about the prisons that are filled with young people. The age, the biggest age in the American prisons is age 14 and 15. Not 30 and 40. Why 14 and 15? Because they never had an ox next, and a mature ox next to them to bring them in and hold them in and counsel and tell them the truth and set their lives in hell. Because it's not about right now gratification. It's about the future. See, remember I mentioned this. Most of you here are being called into ministry. It's not about right now. It's about tomorrow. Because most of you don't have a growing and dynamic ministry that's touching the world for God right now. But God wants to prepare you for that. And if he has to slow you down, he'll slow you down. And if he has to take the people into captivity for so many years, for 70 years, he'll do that, you know. But the right time, he'll bring them back. Would you, would you want to go to captivity for 70 years? No, we don't want to go to captivity for 70 years. Not 7 years. Not 70 years. How about if everything stopped for 7 days? Everything stopped for 3 days for Saul of Tarsus. A man that was renownedly known as a scholar of God's Torah, but refusing to yield to the voice of God through Yeshua the Messiah. So God stopped him. Jonah, same thing. Yeah. The thing about this is that the, the Western Roman mind is also a suicidal mind. If you will not change and do it in his ways, then then you said, then, if I cannot have it my way, and, and what we have today is, have it your way, Burger King, you know. 
And, and what was Frank Sinatra's song? My, do it my way. There you go. You see, so this is the Western mentality. You keep drumming into people's life a message of don't do it God's way. And when, and when you reach a degree of success and you have not really been doing it his way, in his permissive way, and uh, anything apart from God will be the permissive way of God. Because God says, I want to be your king. The people said, no, we want a man. So they got a man. And that's what we're in the condition that we're in. Just think about if he, if he was still king right now. Hallelujah. And we did it his way. Everything would be different. Amen? Okay, so this letter is about an ox. As the ox is strong, the letter also has the meaning of strong then. So the letter Aleph has the meaning of what? Strong. The second letter, now we're going to form a word, would be uh, connected to Aleph, would be the letter Bet or Bet. It is the pit picture of a tent or a house where who lives inside the house usually? A family. So it would be a picture of a tent or a house where the family resides and when combined then you combine Aleph Bet, you combine these two letters together and you're now what is what is what is coming in now? You when you combine these two letters you form two letters which would be A and B. And what is the what is the word for father in Hebrew? Ab. Ab, A B, or Abba. Yeah. Okay. So Abba, Ab, A B. You combine it together, you get the word Father, which is God. Okay. Our Father, which art in heaven. So the, combining these two, meaning also the strength now of the house is who? God. And so it represents father. The word for father in Hebrew, again, is A-B or Abba, father, Aleph, Bet. Now, Abba, A-B-B-A would be what? Abba or what? Abba. Be father, house, house, father. Father in the house. And the house is in the Father. It's like the scripture says, God is in us and we are in Him. Abba meaning the same thing, that He is in us, He is in our house, and this is the house where He lives in. Ba. Yes, right. Of course, Ba means come. Or Bo. Bo, come. Yeshua, Bo. He, he, he comes. Yes. Huba, he comes, okay? All right. Now, the word alphabet is important. So let's look at this word. Alphabet itself comes from the first two letters of the Greek alphabet. Those are not English or Hebrew words. Al alpha. Yeshua said, what? I am the. Aleph and the Tav. He never said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Because those are Hebrew words. So alphabet are Hebrew words. I mean, are Greek words. Greek pagan words. Are you following me here? Yes. Okay. So we get so happy that we're speaking pagan. Wow. More happier. How about if we learn it, Aleph and Tav. He's the Aleph and Tav. I would rather just switch over to the real thing. If possible, yes. even if others don't understand me. This is why the Messianic uh, ministry always tries to combine a little bit of the Hebrew in between there. It's educational. It is getting people to begin to switch over gradually because it's so hard on Christians to be hearing Hebrew. I don't want to hear this name Yeshua again. Now, our Chinese ministry, that, that's what they told them. Connie and, and, and Raymond. 
They kicked him out of their Chinese church, and he was one of the pastors because they were using the name Yeshua. And he said, we're tired of hearing this name Yeshua. We want to hear, we want to hear some pagan. Wow, they don't say it that way, all right? But they don't understand the root words, where these English letter words have come from. Now, <clears throat> Gilda, which is my personal secretary, she had a dream. It's something that I kind of believe is possible. Because when they spoke in tongues, everyone understood in what language? In their own language. In their own language. So here, I, I could be speaking in tongues and everyone's understanding. And she said, I saw you in a dream. And in the dream, you were preaching to nations. And every nation was understanding what you were saying. Isn't this amazing? Could this be probable and impossible? Well, we see it in the day of Pentecost. In the very same day that God gave Moshe the Torah, gave him the Holy Scriptures, gave them the Hebrew language, Bible to speak in, and selected the, the tribe that had two curses upon them. The tribe of Levi. And they says, no, the other ones won't do it, but they stepped up to the plate and they became the priest. Next, next Shabbat, you got to be here. We're going to show you the continuation of the Hanukkah story and how this whole scenario is, is an amazing scenario that fits our time and our day to day. And how the plans were first will give you religion then we're going to take religion away from you. This is something that Constantine also did. Because the Jewish people were under such attack from the pagan world. They needed some relief. And here comes Constantine saying, I've accepted Jesus into my heart. I'm no longer a pagan. But his actual plan was... We're going to support you Jews and you can continue to do your thing and have your Passovers and have your feasts because now we're serving your God. But his whole intent was to do what? Take everything away from them gradually and systematically taking everything away from them. This is basically was the plan in 164 BC when the Maccabees had to step up to the plate. But what is now going on? I will bring it to today. What is going on today? Because history repeats itself. Amen? Yeah. All right. Getting back to the, the, the second letter, Bet. I said it's a picture of a tender house. <clears throat> the, the word alphabet again. The Greek alphabet derived from many earlier uh, Canaanites kind of Semitic alphabets and they came through by the way of Phoenicians the Phoenicians and we have to remember the Canaanites as the people who were driven out by the Israelites after the exodus from Egypt so in turn the Greek alphabet then passed by the way of the Etruscans that I've already mentioned to you about and to Rome so now you know it's making its way okay to Rome and so now nearly the entire Italy now becomes uh, I would say part of that whole system there are big questions deeper questions that we we've already been dealing with but all, in all of this, I give you uh, the, these questions. There are some smaller questions, some smaller things to consider that are, could be very intriguing. For example, the letter X. Has anyone considered the letter X? It's always almost used as for something that is unknown. In, in other studies, I'm going to give you certain understandings of certain Western mind letters. 
There are many small questions, as I said. Now, we mentioned and we read here in Psalms 1, verse 1 and 3, that David was a man after God's own heart. And why was he a man after God's own heart? It's because he meditated only in the Torah. Now, do you know which, uh, let me see if you learned something. Do you know which animal did A originally symbolize? Ox, okay, an ox. So the ox in the A also has the head of the ox and then it has two legs. So an A has a head for the ox and it has two legs two legs down, right, because it forms an A, you see, or uh, an upside down, upside down V with a little, what, line across, and that makes the head, but the head has two legs, that, that is the A, the A legs were horns of the ox, so you, now you see the A, it has a head and it has horns, how many horns? Two horns, all right? They're actually basically, which way does the horns point, point to? Upward, okay? At least that was, in fact, the original letter A 3,000 years ago. Pictorial picture of the letter A or Aleph. The Western world's alphabet, again, is traced back sometime between 2000 BC uh, in Egypt and then 4,000 years ago when it originally started the Western mind. Let me just capture this and bring it together because the time is already closed. Each English letter history goes through ancient Greece and Rome. If anything, put a little asterisk there by that statement I just made, that every English letter history goes through the ancient Greece and Rome, then medieval England, and subsequent stages. And although the English letters are noteworthy, of course, the English letters must absolutely become not, not, noteworthy because anything that is the permissive will of God should become noteworthy because God is permitting it. To me, the permissive will is this. You can have the penthouse or you can have the first floor. Which one do you want? We want the penthouse. That is the what will of God? The perfect will of God. Why do we settle for less than the perfect will of God? So I do want to say that, that the anointing will flow also in the permissive will of God. But in the permissive will of God, what's going to happen is that we'll do what God says today, but we'll send tomorrow. This is what happened to Abraham. He lied about his wife. <laughs> okay? It happened to David. He, he went with the wrong woman, but yet he was a good king at the same time. Isn't it amazing that when we live in the permissive will of God, we want to be like Jonah, commit suicide one day, and then finally we repent and turn around and we save all none of you for him? And the next day we slip and slide. Man, we're in a slip and slide world. Today we listen, but most of the time, because we have a Western... Roman mind thinking we are judgmental. We go to a congregation and we're judging the message and we're judging the teaching just like they judge Yeshua the Messiah, constantly judging him and finally hanging him. Is that true? Of course it's true. Because the Western mind is spontaneous. We only want the gravy. We won't eat the turkey because it's dry without the gravy. And if we eat it, well... We're vegetarians to a certain point, you know. We won't touch the um, the salad dressing. I'm vegetarian. 
but on the snake we'll do something else. See? Why? Because we don't understand where the roots. This is why we've got to return to the true roots. Yeshua was known as the root of the house of Jesse. We've got to return to the root, the mindset of Yeshua, the Messiah, that was Jewish, the Jew himself. And so I, I'm closing with this part again. Each English letter history goes through an ancient Greece and Rome and medieval England and so forth, but English letters are noteworthy in their roles. In literature, for example, a lot of good Christian books or good literature has been written. And even in the branch of art, history, drama, dance, music, In literature, traditional, traditionally, this is the branch of art, literature, art history, which studies the identification, description, and interpretation of content, of image. Because the Western world is, mindset is focused on what? Im, Mitch. That's the Western mindset. It's focused on image. So we have an internet now that gives us the ability t so that our image can be put out there. And you know what the, the Lord told me? He says, this is what I did for many years. Don't even let your name be known. And so for most of my ministries until now, the things are beginning to change I would never let my name be known. Yeah. I'm supposed to be hidden in Him. If I do, if you do it my way and don't let your name be known, do you know how many people in Hawaii know that we're here? Very few people know because we have not done what other ministers have known. Even our SNN News, they think that I am just simply a Jew. They don't even know that I'm a born-again believer. Why? Because I am hidden. Just like God hid himself in the book of Esther. He hid himself. He was working behind the scene. And he basically said to me, Are you better than me? That you have to show the world who you are? No. So I learned to work behind the scene. And he will bring the sheep. He says, if I be lifted up, I will do the drawing. Let me do the drawing. Let me do the promoting for you. In the beginning, it must be just a few people. He didn't demand a thousand people, just twelve. So he could teach them and mold them and shape them. But they still had a little bit of the Roman control over their lives. So they developed, quote, a Hellenistic Roman mindset. This is why Peter denied him at least three times. And there was bickering among themselves. But after that, the Holy Ghost came upon him. Everything changed, isn't it? Perhaps we all need a fresh outpouring of his glory upon us to reinvigorate us on the inside and change us completely and transform us and bring us out from among them into his beautiful and most glorious light. Yeah. And when that happens, then you can be like a Daniel. That being even in a state of being a prisoner, captive, He did not defile himself. And in those days, they had like these more than Gisha girls. They would be women almost half naked. But their eyes were like covered with a blanket of innocence. Almost similarly, 
to what Adam and Eve had when they were in the initial garden. They could not even see the nakedness until that light was removed. Are you following me here? Uh huh. And when Moshe went up there, that light suddenly came upon him. And they could not even look upon him because that light, it was not about being so bright, it was so pure. What God wants to do in our lives is something that is pure. When we are not pure, we see this one, and he says, oh, that's a mess. I see what's going on. I see this with my eyes. Accusation and judgment is part of the Roman Greek. Because this is what the Greeks did. They killed everyone that was not perfect in the intellectual way of their thinking. They aborted babies. Something Hitler wanted to do. If you're not an Aaron, Aaron, you're not perfect, you're out of here in this world. This is where the Greeks came in. This is where the philosophies come in from all of those that did it. But we need to come out from that gradually. I hope that this was not so much deep for you. How many understood much, most of that? I pray that you have received it and have understood it. I have taught it to you from a heart that wants to see God do tremendous things in your life. Yes. Yes. Both. It's, it's for both, actually. And again, uh, in my continuing teaching, we'll get into that. Because, as I said, for every letter it takes an hour and a half, so I cannot give you a quick short synopsis. I have to actually describe the sounds and say the sounds so that you'll be able to say. For example, the Aleph has a sound. And the English is dead. A is dead. It has no depth. It has no heart. It has no meaning. Okay? So I'm going to show you the big difference of, with, with the Roman, because it came from paganism. Paganism is, is death. Okay? So what the world's been using is a death language. Basically. You know. And what does God have to do? He's got to use, you know, the rocks, as it were, to talk. Right? The trees of the field is not really the calling of God. But the trees of the field will clap their hands because they recognize the glory and the power of God. God never called a rock to cry out to him. But God says, if I have to use the rock, and God has had to use the English language. God has had to use polluted lives that slip and slide and are disobedient to him. And the, the, remember this also. If you fail him today, yes, he will forgive you. But that doesn't mean that you can bounce right back where you were today. No, 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 no. Because you lost some ground. And you need to be restored. How many remember Jimmy Swagger? Yeah, remember when he fell? All right. He was part of the Assemblies of God. He had this dynamic worldwide ministry. Millions of people, television all over the place. A mighty man of God that was heralded as, as, as an icon. His voice is beautiful. He, could st he still sings beautiful. I had so many of, of, of his CDs. All right, Jimmy Swagger. But then the assemblies of God said, Jimmy Swagger, you have fallen. We want to restore you so you can be right back where you were. But you have to sit down for two years. Because what you have done is so serious that you need to be restored. Restoration has to come into your life. Yeah. Before you jump in, you know what he said? He says, no, because if I do this, I will lose my contacts. I will lose, lose my world network. I will lose my ministry. And he refused. And guess what? He lost it all. Because he wanted to do his way. 
We're going to lose it all when we don't obey His voice. Rather to obey God than to please man. I don't want, to, I don't want that country to, to be upset. It's not about upsetting that country. It's about you and God. It's about your calling. You know, this is why I, I, I refuse. When I see that something's wrong, I just simply give them a call. I'm sorry I cannot be there. And I use the most tactful way to present the picture. But you said you were going to come. And then I finally get frank with them and I say, this is the problem. You know. So what did the, what did the Lord say? If they do not accept you, go ahead and go anyway. He says, no, leave, dust the feet off your feet. Don't worry about what they're going to think. You go on your way. I'm watching you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Uh -huh.